I'm Chris Padgett. I'm a hacker working on the Passport Card and EDL, and we're in downtown San Francisco looking for some tags to clone. Part of the system. Um, this is my RFID reader. It's a Motorola Symbol XR400. Um, supports up to four antennas, so I could have aerials all, all around the car. Um, as it is at the moment, I've only got the one antenna. Um, that's this one. So. RF cables come out of here and into there, obviously, um, and then a, an Ethernet cable coming to the laptop in the front seat. So the laptop um, is all it's doing is telling the reader to continuously scan for tags and then uh, reading back any information that it gets, um, and then just logging it. It's it's not um, it's not particularly complicated. It's just a question of finding the right parts and and paying the right price. The for pane it. on the left is the tags that the reader can currently see. So that's that's tags that are currently in its field of view. Um, in the middle, you've got a list of all of the tags that it's seen at any point since the software was started. So you can see um, at the top, there's there's two random tags that I don't know what they are. They could be just about anything. And then the, the three at the bottom have a known prefix that corresponds to a passport card. So those three were actually passport cards, one of which we, we know is, is my, uh, my test card. Um, actually it belongs to my boss because I'm, I'm not allowed to get one myself. I, I personally believe that RFID is, is very unsuitable for tagging people. So I, I don't believe that we should have any kind of identity documents with RFID tags in them. So my, my ultimate goal here would be, you know, my, my dream for the, the, this, this research would be to see the entire um, Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative just be scrapped. Um, so that would be the, the, the electronic driver's licenses, the passport cards, and there's three or four other cards that form part of the program as well. Well, the, the thing that really worries me is that, um, I mean, passport, the, the passport card isn't widely deployed yet. Um, there's been three quarters of a million issued to date, and just cruising around San Francisco for half an hour, we've we've cloned a few. Um, so, as this technology becomes widely used, and, and as it becomes deployed in, in EDL as well, um, the prevalence of these tags is is going to get higher, and there's there's going to be more people carrying them, and probably just as few people who actually realise that that this thing is in their pocket and, and is available to be queried by anyone with a suitable reader. So you've got a, a you've got your driver's license, which you, you, you'll you always have in your pocket. It's, it's where you keep your driver's license. And this was a really bad idea. Um, so yeah, you've, you've got your passport, your passport card in your pocket and you don't shield that. So why would you shield your driver's license? And then you've got, you know, potentially everyone walking around with driver's licenses in their pockets that can be tracked. So it, it does, it really does facilitate very wide scale and, and very long range tracking of people. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you combine a, if you combine the reader that I've got at a choke point like a doorway with a, uh, another kind of RFID reader, someone that reads credit cards say, um, you can correlate the, the, the ID number that you get from the passport card with the identity that you can retrieve from the credit cards. So that instead of just tracking a passport card around the city, you can then track an actual identity around the city, um, as verified by the, the correlation between different types of RFID tag when you go through a doorway or when you put, walk past a, a reader station on the street. The tags in use support, um, they have a kill code and a lock code. So the lock code prevents you from changing the ID number in the tag, and the kill code can be used to disable the tag. It'll make it kind of self-destruct. So at the moment, as far as I'm aware, the only verification that's being done with this system is the actual ID number. And it's, it's trivial to program a new ID number into a blank tag that you could have harvested on the street or just plucked out of thin air. Um, what they could do is they could also verify the, the kill code and the lock code are set correctly. Um, the problem with that is that it's done um, over the air in plain text. So with my GNU radio hardware, um, courtesy of sponsorship from Etos Research, um, I'll be able to sniff those codes as they're transmitted, um, recover them, uh, possibly even perform differential power analysis against the tag to interrogate the tag and, and 
retrieve those, those lock codes um, in the absence of, of anyone else that actually knows them. So in theory, they could put in some more protections. Um, in practice, they won't they won't last very long if they do. And in this.